we're tracking on the changes that we're heading into. This is the time for resurrection life. This is the time that our bodies are going to undergo a change. Literally, from one creation into an entirely new one. And this we've talked about. The sons of God are a whole new race. A whole new creation before God. We can go through the scriptures where it talks about change that's going to happen and when you look up the the Greek literal word uh, translation it actually is metamorpho which is metamorphosis which would be similar to the worm changing into a butterfly where it's a completely different order and Peter talks about it Paul talks about it that the sons are a whole new race And God is doing something new. So what can we expect right now? Right now, June 2018, we can expect a transfiguration that's happening. And will happen, and this is the time for it. When the Lord was on the mountain with the disciples, and the Heavenly Father appeared and overshadowed And at that point in time, Christ was transfigured. And his face shone, you know, as white as the firmament. And we don't really understand exactly what happened to the Lord. I don't know any accounts where the Lord explains it and says, this is what's happened to me. But the transfiguration happened before the time that Christ went and died on the cross. Did Christ, was Christ subject to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of that, that it, you know, that were seeking to take his life? No, he gave his life. He didn't have to, but he gave his life. He already had resurrection He was already transfigured. And I know that when it says the knife pierced him, but water came out, we don't really understand what happened to the Lord when the Father appeared to him. We know that in the New Testament it talks about the very same power that the Father exerted toward the Lord in transforming him changing him is the very same power that is at work within us but is also being focused towards us and will bring us through this transition and complete the transfiguration or Romans talks about glorifying because what God is doing is glorifying his sons and the glorification almost goes hand in hand with the word transfiguration metamorphosis change a whole change of order of person I recall many years ago when Dick Lloyd appeared and he looked and he said your blood type is different and I said well what does that mean And he says it means you're going to undergo extensive physical change. And I know that he was pointing to that time where transfiguration was going to happen. And all we have to have is one person to break through. Just one is all it's going to take because once one breaks through, it's all done. I wish we understood more clearly what happened to the Lord when the Father appeared to him. A word came many years ago with respect to what was going to happen. And that word concerned how this breakthrough was going to happen. Was it going to be progressive? 
Was it going to be gradual? Was it going to be like the work of the cross that was just an ongoing thing? No, the word came that it was going to be a breakthrough that would come. A breakthrough and you touch God and God touches you and there's a change that happens similar to how Paul talks about it when he says change in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The Lord referenced that a few years back and said, in the zing of a moment, in the zing of a moment is going to happen. So what we're looking for is not to feel better each day or have, you know, some element of, you know, of, of change happen and equate that to a measure of uh, resurrection life really all that is is the fact that we're coming alive progressively more and more and the spirit is moving progressively more in ascendancy over the soul but what we're looking for is a breakthrough where God touches us we touch God and in the zing of a moment in the twinkling of an eye were transfigured, were changed as the Lord had experienced. That's what we're looking for. That's what we're waiting before Him for right now. And we are we are here at the threshold. The word has come a number of times. What you seek is right here. It's right beneath your skin. It's right around the corner. The word has also come, you've got it, reach in, accept it, believe it, whatnot. All of that tends to send a signal or a message to us that the Lord is listening. The Father hears our hearts cry. He hears our undying, our, you know, our ongoing yearning and crying before him because that's our spirit praying unceasingly and so he hears that and he has responded and said what you seek is right here you hand you have it and picture it visualize it reach in grab it but in the final analysis what that does is create an atmosphere for that breakthrough to come that we seek where God touches us we touch God and there is a transmutation happens there's a transfiguration there is an exertion of power from the Father that touches us and changes us into a whole new creation Christ the first fruits of many to come. He was the first of many of this whole new order or race that God had destined to bring forth many sons. So the Lord has already paved the way. He's already entered into that. But we're now following closely behind So we're talking about a whole new order, a whole new creation. The word says that flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom. What does that mean? Well, none of us know. Experientially, we don't know. You can say, well, I'm a Bible scholar, and it means that flesh and blood isn't going to inherit the kingdom. Well, what does that mean? You can't really talk about it until you've passed through into that change and you understand but we do know that our existence right now is not what's going to possess and Paul talks about how we wait to be clothed from on high right now we're clothed in, in these you know wrappings or trappings of death but we have this heavenly body we have this this you know a, 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 a clothing from above you know and it's 
we've talked about it before, like unzipping one garment and putting on another. All of this, all of this is talking about one thing. It's not talking about different things. About, well, okay, I'm going to be putting on the robes of righteousness. I'm going to be reaching for the, the heavenly, you know, temple that is coming down from above, so on and so forth. It's all talking about just one thing. The transformation into sonship. The changing of your body into a whole new creation. That's what it is. You don't get the robes of righteousness before the transfiguration of what you are. It's all the same thing. It's like looking at a piece of pie and saying, well, it's this, well, it's this, well, it's this. It's all of that inclusive. And it happens simultaneously. The transfiguration, the change that we seek goes hand in hand with the clothing that God puts on us as we unzip the old and put on the new. It's like in the book of Zechariah where they, they you know, he stood before the angels and, and he was filthy. And the word came, okay, take off his filthy garments and clothe him, you know, with the fine raiment. And it was a type of what is happening, going to happen to the sons. And even though that seemed to be like an event that, well, okay, they took the clothes off, they put the clothes on, Zechariah, but still, it really comes down to a moment of time. It's done in an instant. We still are walking on this level of, the, of, of, of humanity, robed in, in these filthy garments, like Zechariah. No matter how righteous God has made us, how much he has purified us, we're still laboring under the filthy garments. And it's God that must take the garments off and clothe us. But that's not a separate event. There are not six different events that we're looking for. We're not looking for God to clothe us and then give us robes of righteousness and, and glorify us and then purify us and transfigure us it's just all one thing it's the breakthrough of breakthroughs that includes all of it and doesn't exclude any of it but when this happens it all happens you're clothed you're perfected you're purified the work is completed and there is a change and flesh and blood does not inherit the kingdom. What you are right now is not capable of inheriting the promise. It's like looking at someone that comes and teaches you spiritual things and you try to understand it from the mind of soul and you cannot. The mind of soul cannot understand the words of spirit. That's only your spirit can. And so we're not going to get there by refining this and trying to understand it and dissect it. It just comes because we step out of one and we step into a whole new thing. What we're looking for is that breakthrough. Not looking for anything else. Not looking for the Lord just to meet us and we feel good and we're able to throw off the battle and get through another day and and he blesses us and the word comes and there's impartation all of that is just fine it's great it's it's part of of our walk with god but that is not what we're looking for no matter how much that god gives us we will not be satisfied we will not say okay lord i'm not letting you off the hook thank you for the blessings you know it says How's it go in the, in the Gospels? You know, seek the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. Well, that's great. But that's not going to distract us. Lord, we seek you. And he says, okay, great. I'm going to add this to you. I'm going to give you another $5 million. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you that. Well, that's great. Thank you, Lord. But that's not what I seek. 
I seek the kingdom. Where's the kingdom? It's within me, but right now it seems to be locked up. The only one that has the key is you, Lord. You have the key. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the impartation. Thank you for everything. But it's not what we seek. We'll not let you off the hook. And say, okay, I've, 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 I've entered into the promise. I've received it. No, you haven't. We've received more of him. We have more of an awareness of him. We can hear his voice better. But it's not what we seek. We seek the transfiguration that the Lord Jesus Christ went through as the first fruits of many brethren, many sons, whom God would bring to birth. In many ways, and there's so much we don't understand of what the Lord Jesus Christ went through, but yet in the Word it says there are not enough books that could be contained if everything was to be written of what happened and what did, you know, what unfolded with the Lord Jesus Christ when he walked. We see such a microscopic pinpoint that is reflected in the Gospels and New Testament, but it's just a pinpoint of what happened during the time of the Lord's presence. So we don't know. There's a great deal we don't know of what he experienced and the transformation he went through But the Lord was the firstborn of a whole new order or race of people, if you want to call it that. I don't know if if people is the right word to even put in it. But the chosen priesthood before God. And that's what we're expecting. That's what has to be at the very focus of our mind. Is I'm not looking for just an anointing and a blessing and and, and, and whatnot. I'm looking for the power, Father, that you exerted to transfigure the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm looking for that same power to transfigure me because I know that flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom. I will not inherit the kingdom as I exist right now. But we are destined to go through a change call it the glorification of our body and we don't know what that experience is to be like and the Lord hasn't really said much about what that experience is like except that it's here at the door and that is what we seek that is what we must tape to our forehead 24-7 Lord this I seek You're appearing that transfigures me. You're appearing that completes the glorification. You're appearing that completes the work that you sent me. You did not send your sons into the earth, O God, that they might become casualties and die and go by the way of the soul and the flesh and and their fathers and fathers before them. The sons, the true sons that you've sent have but one destiny, and that is to go from life into life. 